It's been over 10 years since Yamaha introduced the CFX series to the entire world. They also at the same time introduced the new conservatory series, the CX, replacing the traditional C series. Today we look at the C6X, the seven foot model. Really excited to bring it to you because it sounds wonderful. Hi, this is Ted with Alamo Music Center in downtown San Antonio, Texas. I'm Patrick Marr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, check out our other videos, sign up for notifications, like our videos, leave us comments. We appreciate your support and we love to interact with you. Well, Ted, just in case people aren't local to Texas, we are, we are a Texas store of a location in Austin, two locations in San Antonio. We have new locations in St. Louis and Kansas City. I did want to introduce those two. Um, there'll be officially Kawhi Piano Galleries there, um, but that's part of our Alamo Music uh, Company here. And uh, also, we have Michigan Pianos with uh, a partnership with Evola Super Music. Deal. And so if you're in Detroit, if you're in Traverse City, come see us because we would love to share the joy of music and pianos with you. Uh, but today we are looking at an, a fantastic instrument. You have always said seven foot pianos are near and dear to your heart. They really are. And it's kind of funny because the Yamaha C6 is, you know, six and 11 three quarters or seven foot piano. And it seems like in the last 20 some odd years, we've only had very few of those come through. You it's see, not a piano that people come in and want. You see a lot of C3s, C5s, and C7s. Absolutely. You don't really see C6 that often. And I've always liked the C6s, mostly because even before they changed to the CX series, before they changed, it was the dullest sounding of all the grand pianos. I don't know how, it, by dullest sounding, well, when you got them brand new, it, it was a piano that said, Play me, and I'll sound better every time you touch me. Well, what's the one gripe that some people will say about Yamaha? They're too bright. Yeah, and, that, and you, you hear that, and, you know, for better or worse, that's what people will say. Who knows if it's true? You know, a piano can be voiced in many different ways. Right. But, you know, if you if you go to forums, if you talk to someone at a Steinway gallery, if you talk you, you talk, talk to people around, they'll usually say, oh, Yamahas are bright, they're brittle. But the, you're saying, so the seven-foot Yamaha... It's something about a seven-foot scale. It, the, the whole piano just seems to be balanced better well, you're getting really and it, long and, bass strings right? and it doesn't matter who makes it mm -hmm. okay it's a seven a, a seven foot scale piano the the math just seems to work out better it's easier to tune it's easier to maintain it's easier to divide the strings and to lay out the harp and all those kind of things so i think in the future we need to do the c6x versus the sk no nah, that would be a good video an do. sk6 or a gx6 even um, and then maybe a Steinway B. I think that'd be a, uh, that would be a that'd be a great comparison because those are those are three great instruments, and I think the, the Steinway B is very sought after, even sometimes more than the D. I've I've had customers that have said, "Hey, I'm looking for a B," and it's not because they don't have the room for the nine foot or you know their budget is any sort of they're looking at a Steinway, so that, you know the right. budget can be whatever. But the uh, the B is sometimes the most sought Seven after. Seven footer. It's the most. It's the it used to be the largest, most personalized piano that most people owned. Most mm -hmm. people didn't really have nine footers in the house. Those were for the stage. And, and in the, the design of the, of the seven foot pianos that a nine foot is supposed to sound and play exactly like a seven foot does, except that it's just louder. Mm -hmm. It has the ability to get louder, but there's tonal differences in the things and there's timbral differences between a seven and a nine foot. What I like about a seven foot piano is it still sounds like a great grand piano, but it doesn't sound like an overwhelming, you know, 12 foot, 11 foot long. Yeah, and so tell plank. me about, about the change. So I know one of the big reasons Yamaha changed from the, the traditional C series, the conservatory series, which, you know, dates all the way back to pre seventies really, right? right. It, um, and so you saw a C3 in, you know, the seventies, the eighties, the nineties, into the two thousands. And, uh, and then something big happened around 2008, 2009. Well, they had owned, uh, they had actually purchased and owned the Bosendor for a uh, piano manufacturing company for, for a number of years at that point. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what made the, um, the C series become the, the CX series and that they brought different elements to the to the manufacturing of Yamaha pianos. They kind of okay. not stole the ideas, but yeah, they they, 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 they incorporated using um, a different type of soundboard and putting in uh, a different taper onto their soundboard. And they certainly used different kinds 
of wool. Now, originally when they came out, they said that they had adopted the same type of wool that Bosendorfer uses, and that includes wool on the hammers as well. Mm -hmm. And they also had uh, went to German manufactured strings, which they used to not have. And mm -hmm. the cores are different. The core is shaped different. It's not a rounded core. It's a diamond-shaped core. So when they wrap them, they come out. They're different. Yeah. And um, a few other things they put on there is they kept the V-Pro plate. They kept that that thing the same the same way, but they have uh, a different way of tapering the soundboard. They use the, the same type of method where it gets a little thinner at the end where it actually goes into the frame of the piano. Um, the plate is the same. Uh, they kept the same Ivorite uh, key tops. And I believe for the CX series, they invented the... Um, wood composite process for the black keys to where they actually feel like they're made out of wood, mm -hmm. even though it's a wood composite. And they do feel, they're not as slippery as ebony. I like them, they're a little, they're a little grippier. Well, let's, let's take a listen to the C6X. We'll hear the beautiful tonal qualities you're talking about. And then we'll come back uh, and talk a little bit more about the conservatory series. Sounds great. Now, part of their promotional process at Yamaha is seasoned for destination. And that kind of sounds like a little bit of the spice, and then they put some Maggie sauce on it and some, you know, I don't, I don't know what the deal is with that because they don't specifically say what is seasoned. Uh -huh. Is it the frame? Is it the key bed, the key frame? Is it all the keys? Or is it the whole piano? And, and if it had it, because I know all these come in through California, right? They all come in through so California. So it's seasoned for North America. It's seasoned for North America. Which is, if you're in Colorado. Anywhere from Florida to Canada, that's, you're going to get a specific piano that's intended for this continent. 
But that's there's a huge humidity temperature swing, right? Florida, Louisiana, all the way up to Alaska. Yeah, I think so. So I, I again, I think this. Yeah, I think it might be one of those special. Se- I what I appreciate about the X series from from Yamaha is there had been kind of a lull in Yamaha. You know, it's like, oh, I, if you get an 80 C3 versus a 90 C3 versus a brand new they C3. They revitalized their, their grand piano line. They try to shake business. it up, right? They Cause, really did. Because, you know, this was something that we saw as, as Yamaha dealers for many years was, is it's still a C3. The, an older C3 costs a little bit less. Why would, you know, why would I buy the new one? Um, and then they kind of reinvented it with the with the addition of the X and said, hey, we're re, we're re we're looking at what we can do to change. Um, and I, I would say Yamaha hasn't been as transparent as some other companies when they say, hey, these are the things that we've changed. Um, I don't know if that will change in the future where they'll say, hey, we need to kind of dig deeper and say this is what we did differently. Uh, but they definitely, there is definitely a difference when you play a C6X oh, versus whole C6. The whole line from the C1 all the way up to the to the nine foot piano, it's like some of those models i mean we we used to have a lot of c2s that was a, a very popular selling piano but i think c3s we probably sold more of anything else mm-hmm. most dealers are going to always have c3s and new ones at the top of their list but um when the f- first uh c3x came in and i played it it's like this piano went into a different realm mm-hmm. it just went to a different tier of of manufacturing because it it was almost like an you know, one of the best pianos you can put in college. It was very durable, designed to be played on for hours a day, but it just really went to a professional level conservatory uh, piano when they moved to the CX. I really thought that was a great move for them. So so pianos to compare the C6X to, I would say the GX6 from Kawhi, it would be a comparable one. Um, and, uh, you know, looking at Steinway B. You got to put a Steinway uh, B up there, too. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, I think in Europe, there's a lot of shimmels that, that, that would compete very, very, uh, um, very well with the Yamaha. You'd have to look at what the six foot model or seven foot model is. Um, but I know a lot of times people will, will compare those kind of, hey, this is something you should look at. Right. Um, but if you've owned a conservatory series from Yamaha, I know a lot of people have owned a C3 of the past or a C5. Um, you know, a very popular instrument that goes into recording studios or churches or stages for schools um, or, you know, performing art venues. But if you've owned one, if you've played on one, please leave your comments below because I know people would love to hear it. What are your thoughts on the re- reimagination of the Conservatory series from Yamaha? If you've played one of the past, if you've played one of, of the present, um, I know there's been a, a big shift. And, you know, some people have, set, have, have abandoned Yamaha and said, hey, you know, like there's better manufacturers out there. And some people have said, hey, this is the truth. Look at the CX series. Look at the SX series. Um, we just had a great example of a great C6X here, um, and uh, and wanted to show you guys some examples of how, you know, amazing this piano can sound versus, especially it's kind of a rare item that C6X. Um, but please leave comments below. I'm sure it would help people on their journey and finding the right instrument. Again, this is Ted Barcelo and Patrick Marr. We'll be comparing the C6X. C6X. It's a lot of. Um, but we'll be comparing it to some other uh, other manufacturers and, and taking a listen of the comparison. So make sure you're subscribed so we can bring you that great content. Thank you for watching.